Welcome back to Gems with Genesis Amaris Kemp. With me today is Adam Adams. And here's a bit about Adam. Adam Adams is the founder of GrowYourShow.com, where they help you get your message out to the world. Their clients are getting ranked in the top 1% on Apple podcast and other top charts, which means one thing. His clients have more influence than 99% of the podcasts out there. Adam says the reason most podcasters fail is the lack of marketing. Dun, dun, dun. Which is why his niche is to manage that critical piece so you can have more listeners, more downloads, more ratings, and more reviews. Adam has a loyal following in the real estate industry as well as in the podcast industry. After selling his real estate podcast, he actually sold his first show. He didn't even know he could do that. He launched the podcast on podcasting, which, which is ranked as the top podcast to help podcasters. And without further ado, let's welcome Adam Adams. And we're going to talk about the three pillars of influence. Hey, hey, how's it going? Hey, it's going well, Adams. And man, reading your bio for the first time after skimming it, I was like, oh, legendary. <laughs> you know, I feel like I need to change my bio. I feel like it's too long and too many details. And uh, the listeners like, let's get to the meat. Um, one, th one thing that you mentioned uh, during the bio uh, as you were reading it, it's, it was um, that our, our podcasters are getting ranked in the top 1%, more influence than 99% of podcasters. And the reason why was that many people don't advertise. They don't, they don't try to get their podcast in front of other people. And I, I look at that as the chicken and egg, like what comes first? And it's really hard because some people are like, why would I put money behind my podcast if I'm losing money with my podcast, if it's costing me? today. And I just, I want to recommend as we get into the three pillars of influence today and like share, how are you going to really make the most amount of money in your business? Sometimes it takes you uh, going out on a limb and investing in into something, investing your time or investing your money or both. And you actually, that's when I say investing, I'm, I don't say spending because you, you get a return on that uh, there is an ROI, a return on investment. You get a return on that time, a return on the money. Um, so it's like, what comes first, the chicken or the egg? Am I super famous and then I make money? Or do I make money and then I become super famous? Whatever the case is, you probably want to, uh, you probably want to either give back or, or make money or do both in this life. And I think that it, it all comes down to the three pillars of influence. It all comes down to understanding if if you're going to invest into something truly or just kind of dabble into it and i th i think you'll probably fail if you dabble so you you want to get like fully uh in place um i will share what are the three pillars so you're like what does that mean the three pillars uh what i mean is with the three pillars of influence there are three things that i've noticed when i spend time to look at the people that i look up to i re admire and i respect I've seen that they all have three main things in common, and it's why they are so successful in what they do. And I call them the three pillars of influence. One of them is a thought leadership platform, and it could be anything. I choose podcasting. Um, you know, Genesis picks podcasting. Um, so you could also write a book or have a YouTube channel. There's a lot of other options, but Either way, you have to have a thought leadership platform. I've, I've clearly noticed that anybody that I look up to, admire, and respect, they have some type of thought leadership platform. Uh, the, another one is meeting people in person. Now, this can be like hosting some type of conference or a meetup group. It could be having a, a, a business um, that people come to you. Or it could be just you going to other people's events or connecting with people. But I really feel like that I've seen that it's going to be really important if you're going to get people to trust you and want to work with you, you ought to be connected. And the third one is your social media presence. And I already know a couple of people are rolling your eyes. I, I can almost see you rolling your eyes. And this is just a recording. 
you're like social media. I don't want to do social media. I'm not an out there type of person. I'm an in there type of person. Nobody needs to know my business. And so I want to encourage you to at least have an open mind today as we talk about these three things, because the social media is going to be incredibly important, uh, especially if you listen to what Gary Vaynerchuk has said, that if you're not on social media and active by 2022, you will lose in business. I've known, I, I know some people that don't have thought leadership platforms or social media. And in 2019, they lost their business to podcasters and people that were active on social media. So we'll get into that in a minute. And Adam, that is so true. Like, I'm going to start with social media first, y'all. And I'm using myself as an example. I did not have social media until 2020 when my book came out in May. And I only got on social media because my publisher said, if you want your book to do well and you want to reach best-selling author ranks on Amazon, you will get on social media to promote. And I felt to Adam's um, description, I don't want people in my business because my personal life is my personal life. But here's the catcher around that. You put out on social media what you want to share. You don't need to put out all your personal details, like what's going on in your house, what's going on in your marriage, and etc. Put out enough information that is conducive to your brand and what you are trying to build. If something does not represent your brand, then it shouldn't be on your social media platform because then it becomes a conflict of interest, COI, and then the messaging gets blurred, in my opinion. And then whenever you think about thought leadership, ask yourself, what type of leader do I want to be? How do I want to be seen? How do I want other people to perceive me? Because there is a difference in my opinion, and Adam will, will chime in here, because coming from a corporate background, spending 15 years in corporate America and working in oil and gas and energy for 12 years, you have to look a certain way, especially whenever you are part of the good old boys club in my opinion and you are representing the company in meetings with internal as well as external stakeholders you walk the walk you talk the talk and you do things in order to drive those metrics close on the sale and etc so what type of leader do you want to be? And I'm not telling you to be the leader that is following other people with you dying to who you are internally. I want you to be uniquely you. I want you to know that you're a masterpiece and craft your message around that because we're not looking for robots here, but we are looking for individuals who are standing out in their elements. So that's what I think about when I when I consider a thought leader. And then your other pillar, Adam, I want you to chime in here, is meeting in person. So when I think about meeting in person, if you like going to happy hours, that's a way you meet people in, in person. Like when I was in oil and gas, we had a big conference called OTC, Offshore Technology Conference here in the Houston area. That's where I met a lot of people. And then those people, I funneled them to LinkedIn and I grew my LinkedIn there. It's under my other brand, but that's what I did. And whenever you meet people, they remember how you made them feel and etc. If you like to, you know, say you like wine, well, go hang out at wineries, hang out in the places that you know your tribe is going to be there. Don't just go somewhere where you're not conducive and you feel like you're a bump on a log, in my opinion. But Adam, chime in here because you're definitely an SME when it comes to podcasting with all the metrics you mentioned. What is, what's SME? You Sub said- Subject matter expert. Oh, I didn't even know that. Now that's embarrassing. And it's all recorded for millions of people to view. No, Love no it. worries. <laughs> We're here to educate, inspire, and motivate. I'm learning from you and you're learning from me. That's what it's all about. And we're sharing our knowledge to the people. Awesome. Awesome. Well, if you are getting educated, inspired, motivated, and you're the type of person who wants to branch out and get some results, here's a few ways to do it. Um, so I'll just jump. I'll just mention, because here's the three are thought leadership, meeting in person, and social media. I really like to maybe just give one or two things on each thing, and we can we can do any Q&A right after, but just a, a couple things, and this is all off the cuff. 
With thought leadership, there's one purpose of thought leadership. Here's why you might want to have a a book or a podcast or a blog. The purpose of it is to get people to talk about you even when you're not in the room. You're getting them to basically share your content. They're, they're, you're, you're getting true fans that have seen you, that know what you're about, and they're telling other people, just like you're talking about Gem right now, this podcast, just like you share this with your friend at the end of the episode, you're like, hey, I really enjoyed this episode. I think you get a lot out of it. That is Genesis having her way of getting you to talk when she's not even in the room. Uh, And that's a huge benefit to thought leadership. When you have your book, they're going to be sharing the book. When you have your podcast, they're going to be sharing your episodes, the the quotes that you said. And I've even quoted Genesis today a couple of times. Like I quoted her saying, if we're not looking for robots on thought leadership, uh, there's a quote there. And now other people are like, hey, look, they're not looking for robots because now you have a quotable thing. The next one, they remember how you made them feel. That's another quotable thing that she said. And that is so true. When you're in person, meeting in person, those people that you're connecting with, they might not remember everything about you. They might not remember what shirt you're wearing. You're so worried about the shirt you're going to be wearing. They might not remember all the details you told them about your business, but they will remember how you made them feel. That stood out to me. And it may have stood out to you. So these quotes are ways that I can share shareable content. And that's the main purpose of thought leadership. Um, and one thing really crazy yeah, go before ahead. you go to the next one. And your smile, y'all. A smile is contagious. People remember your smile. And it is the weirdest thing. But if you smile so big where it illuminates them and it knocks out their darkness or they feel like your smile takes their breath away or maybe the tone of your voice, it sounds weird, y'all, but that is one thing that I know some people have said, oh, I remember your smile or I remember your soothing voice or whatever, because yeah. that is unique to you. So, so I've ahead. I've been told by a few people that I have kind eyes. I I. I don't know what it is. It's not my smile. It's my eyes. And I don't have no idea what they did. um, But apparently they're kind. They're not mean. They're not mean eyes. Lean in, Adam. So I get so the viewers could see your eyes. Oh, what color are they? Blue? Yeah, they they are. There is only one person in my family that doesn't have blue eyes. And they're they're like hazel or green or something. Something's they're like multicolored. There's gold parts green parts and blue parts. Uh, but at, at anyway, yeah, very, very sea blue eyes. Um, going in there, there's another couple of things like maybe about thought leadership that's going to be imp- important. When you create your thought leadership platform, because I'm, I'm literally sitting here pouring into you saying that these three things will make or break what you do in business and the legacy that you can leave. Um, So a couple of tips on like creating a thought leadership platform, you're going to want to know who is your audience. Even today, you know, we had this conversation of who, who you are. We, I wanted, I needed to know who you are to be able to understand how to, how to deliver something that could be beneficial for you. When you're creating your thought leadership platform, It's important that you understand who you're speaking to, the goal that you have with that podcast, for example, if it's a podcast, and then you want to be able to create content that specifically answers questions that I call it your avatar, your perfect listener, or the the person you want to do business with. They're looking for this. They are already out there needing it, wanting it. They don't get the same um, spin on it from other people than they are going to get from you. And you're going to create that spin. And the way that I like to do this, it's called drawing a line in the sand. And it's super important that I share a a very short fake story. It's not even a real story. Um, But there's this guy, his name is, uh, now it might be a real story. It's kind of based on a true, true scenario, or at least I could imagine it being true. But this guy, his name's uh, because like when you're back in the caveman eras, those are the basic names that you had back then. So I I call him uh, 
Oz his name. And the, this guy is part of the only tribe. There's one chief and one tribe back then. This is like long time ago. And uh, is the first one to discover fire. And he, he finds out that it can cook food. He finds out that it can keep him warm at night. He doesn't have to go in the cave. It's like so cool that he discovered this and he brought it to the chief and he was so excited and he was a little let down that the chief was like, no, that's not what we're about. We don't play with that. That's of the devil. There's something wrong with that. It's dangerous. Look, it just burned your finger. Uh, we can't have fire. And so the cave, the cave chief ended up saying, you either have to leave us alone or you have to stop this madness of fire. And what uh, it ended up doing is he drew a line in the sand because he was so freaking passionate about his unique genius, the thing that he's doing a little bit differently than everybody else. And he just said, look, you can, you can totally stay on that side. If you come with me, we're going to use fire. We're going to use it to cook food. We're going to use it to keep warm. We're going to do everything we can to be safe. And for the first time in history, he created his own following. He drew his line in the sand, and now some people are going his direction. They believe in what he's doing, and they actually left their original cave chief. Uh, and that's what you've got to be doing. When you create your thought leadership platform, you've got to be passionate about your spin that you have on things. You've got to draw a line in the sand and you have to be okay to say on that side of the line, this is how things are on this side of the line. This is how things are. Who wants to join me? And you've got to be uh, comfortable and okay that half those people are going to stay with the original chief, but the other half are going to be your true followers, your true fans. I love that story. Uh, oh. <laughs> because it makes sense because, and I'll say it this way, in life, we're going to have two types of people, seasonal people and lifelong people. Seasonal people are going to be with us for a mere season and a mere chapter. And when that chapter comes to a close, they're no longer going to be a part of our tribe because we either poured into them what they needed to get to their next chapter, or they poured into us what we needed to get to our next chapter. Lifeline people are going to be the people who are with you when you're at the bottom and the people who are with you at the top. They see you no different than where you started or where you ended or where your arrival is temporarily. So don't ever confuse those two types of people, seasonal people with lifelong people. And whenever you draw that line in the sand that Adam mentioned, it is to set yourself some boundaries, because it's so important that we have boundaries and we understand what our vision is, and we get laser clear focus on our avatar. And as you begin to grow in your thought leadership, whether it's blogging, your author journey, podcasting, or etc., your avatar will change over time as you begin to niche down and get clearer on your ultimate end goals. So don't just be afraid of just writing something down. And I'm a writer girl. So like, I was working on my avatar assignment the other day. Um, so when I was writing down who my ideal client is, as I started to really think on it and reflect, then I began to get more clear on what I wanted my avatar to look at. That way I'm not spending priceless time and energy seeking out people who aren't conducive to where I'm trying to go. Uh, a lot of, lot of good feedback there for sure. Uh, moving. So, so, so just putting, putting this out there before we move on. Thought leadership is critically important. If people aren't talking about you and what you stand for and your unique style, it is going to be a huge challenge for you, like swimming upstream is, to, to get noticed, to start doing business. And that brings to the second piece. I started a, a meetup group. That was my first way of doing this. I, I, I moved to a new city and I didn't really know how I was going to do business or make it because somebody told me, and I believe it, your network is your net worth. And so I'm thinking to myself, well, if I don't have a network, I'm freaking screwed. Like, where am I going to go if I don't really have a network? So I decided 
for me, the right way to meet people in person was to be the leader of a group. So I started a meetup group in my industry, which was real estate at the time. And I, I just, I tried to add value and going back to drawing a line in the sand at my meetup group, it grew to be one of the top six meetup or is meetups in the entire world out of like 225,000 meetups. I am so grateful for that. And I think that I know one of the biggest reasons is it's going back to drawing a line in the sand. For example, we would meet every single week in our meetup when other meetups would meet uh, every single month. So it, there's a monthly meetup and now I'm a weekly meetup. And it's I had to draw my line in the sand and I had to stand by why I did that. And I remember using some messaging that allowed my the follower, the person that may come to my meetup to understand why are we using fire over here? So I drew that line and I basically said, all of, all of the other meetups that are, that are around right now, at least that were around in Denver at the time, they all meet monthly or less. The reason we've decided to meet weekly is because we found that it takes six to 13 times of meeting somebody in person before you start to trust them. And I don't want any of y'all real estate investors to never be able to do business because after six to 13 months, you're just so freaking tired of trying to network and not being able to find somebody that you can do business with that you quit the game. I want more for you. So we meet every single week. That's why people end up coming here every week is because they know that if they come to the meetup in about in one or two months, they might even start being able to do business with other people. They might be able to make it in this business and they are not going to fall off. That's why we're different. And so we had to draw a line in the sand for every unique thing that we did in our meetup. We used it as part of messaging. And if you want to use the crudest possible way to say that is we use it for brainwashing. And now obviously we're not literally brainwashing, but the point is if you uh, continue to influence the people that are with you, the reason why you do something differently, they can at least make a decision if, if it's following you is the right way to do. So you, you can't, you can't say it once. You can't just do it once. You have to constantly let the people know that are around you what you do that's differently and why. Uh, as one example, in that real estate space that I did, I constantly talked about, if, if most of you have probably even heard this, if you find the deal, the money automatically will come. Uh, you probably heard that. Even if you don't do real estate, it's so normal for people to say, like, if you build it, they will come. If you find the deal, the money flows, like a good deal, the money just automatically comes. That's BS, total BS. It doesn't work like that. And I've seen some really good people, really good people find really good deals, put down earnest money for a real estate deal, like out of their own pocket, five grand, 10 grand, in some cases, hundreds of thousands of dollars on these bigger projects. And they literally lose all of that money because they cannot attract the capital in time because they were told if you find a deal, the money automatically comes. So they're like, I don't even have to think about the money right now. I just want to find a deal so that the money comes. And they've literally been lied to. So I draw my line in the sand and say, look, if, if you really want to be strong in this business and that business being real estate investing, you should attract the OPM, which is also called other people's money. You should attract that OPM prior to looking for a deal. And then can you imagine how you're going to feel when you know that all the money's there? Can you imagine how much more likely a seller is going to say, yes, you can be the buyer of my property when they know that all the money's there? And we can look at this easily when we look at single family home buyers, like your first time home buyers. What does that real estate agent always ask you every single time? Are you pre-qualified? They don't even want to give you the time of day if the bank isn't already agreed to giving to putting in that money. 
show me the money. And so it's the same thing. If you want to be successful in real estate investing, it's not find a deal. The money automatically comes. It's why don't you start attracting the capital? Let them know what you're looking for, the parameters that you're going to be looking for. Get some pre-commitments, and then you're going to have more confidence, and the seller is going to have more confidence. So whatever it is, it's all about messaging. It's all about what am I doing a little bit differently. Um, but one of the big uh, learning lessons from what we've talked about for meeting in person is it generally takes six to 13 times for somebody to start trusting you and wanting to do business with you. And so you want to meet in person a lot more frequently as much as you can. You want to be open and available, even if it's like a, a Zoom call with your people or having a having a, a, a storefront that people can come in or hosting a conference or a meetup, whatever it is, that's going to help you to be able to do business much faster because people are actually going to be able to trust you and care about you as a person. Um, so that's about meeting in person. We'll talk about social media in a sec. Amazing. Those are really great um, tips. And I really like that you always put a story behind it because it's that story that is going to connect with the viewers as well as the listeners. And I want to jump into social media, Adam. So I'm respectful of your time commitment today. Awesome. Awesome. Well, with social media, here's the thing. Many people are like you. Many people do not really want to have a social media. Maybe they waited till 2020. Who knows? Um, I, what I would say is two things. Number one, let's go to Gary Vaynerchuk and, and just talk about two of his shareable quotes. Things that I'm talking about him when he's not in the room, because I can resonate with both of these. The first one we mentioned before is that if you're not on social media by 2022, you will lose in business. The second one is something called jab, jab, right hook. Now, he's talked about this boxing thing, jab, jab, right hook. And the jabs are quick and easy and fast. The right hooks, you can almost see them coming. They're, they're big, they're slow, but they are powerful. And so when you're doing your social media, when, you, when you've decided, hey, I will do something on social media, now, this has already been said on this podcast episode, but you don't have to share everything about your, your lover and maybe the problems that you're going, you don't have to do all of that. You don't have to, uh, to share the food that you're taking. You're probably rolling your eyes when other people share their food. Now I'll be honest. I literally just posted my social media of the, of the dinner that we, we just had a really good Southern food, uh, restaurant with some fried green tomatoes, uh, some insane uh, pork shoulder fried in duck fat and everything else that we had chicken and waffles, which was actually chicken and pancakes because they ran out of waffles. But I shared those images on my social media because I care about that. You don't have to care about that. What you ought to be doing is, is letting people into your world. And now this is the third quote that I'd like to share of Genesis from today's episode. She said, if you like wine, Okay, if you like wine, then you talk about wine. You go to places that have wine, and if you like wine, you and you go and buy a, a nice, you know, fifty dollar, hundred dollar, or, or any other num number bottle of wine. Take a picture of that and let people know what you thought of it. And here's the biggest thing about this social media: two things. Number one is you're going to be able to attract people like you because you're yourself. You're yourself to the freaking core. Who you are to the core can shine. Let your light shine so people can know who you are. Second thing is that you're at least searchable. These days, when people are wondering if they should work with you, it's so sad, but they are literally looking you up on LinkedIn and Facebook first and foremost. They're wondering what comes up when they Google you. And if you don't show up, they are automatically going to discredit you because they, they, don't, they know nothing about you. And if they don't know anything about you, they can't know you, like you, or trust you. That's, those are the three things. Know, like, trust. If you want them to understand who you are, to resonate with who you are. If you like food, put the food up. If you like wine, share that bottle of Burgundy, that bottle of Bordeaux, that bottle of, of Tuscan that you just bought. 
if you if you're all with your kids and you love hanging out with your kids, share share pictures of those cute kids of yours. Talk about the fun things you're doing. Or if you love travel, let people know what you're up to so that they can start to resonate with who you are. You'll be searchable, but also yeah, you talked about the story. I'm going to give you my last story of, of today. A long time ago, uh, when I was doing real estate investing, and I had a podcast, um, and I was doing social media, and I had a meetup. I still have most of these things. Um, as I posted about mountain biking, random. I was just posting about mountain biking because I freaking love mount. I love everything about it. Uh, it's exciting. It's fun. It's scary sometimes. It feels like you've accomplished something when you don't die. And so I would share about my mountain biking. And there was this passive investor like that wants to put their money into real estate deals. And um, he called me and he said, look, I could choose. I could, I could go with anybody. And he basically hurt my feelings when he said, you're all the same. You all have real estate deals. You all say you're the best. You all say this. I could pick anyone out there. But you like mountain biking. I love mountain biking. I feel like I can resonate with you. So, Adam, I want to put my money with you. And this guy had uh, $3 million that he wanted to place in, uh, into my next real estate deal. And with three point, I don't remember anymore, but three point something million dollars automatically that was awarded to me instead of all those other people, what I can point it at is my social media presence me being myself to the core, even though our businesses can be very similar or the same, he was able to resonate with who I was as a person because I was relatable to him. I want you to be relatable to the people that are looking you up when they look you up so that they can decide, I like this person. I, I'm into wine also. I also like yoga. I also like CrossFit. I also like Jeeps. I also like mountain bikes. I also like politics, whatever it is. Be yourself to the core and you'll attract other people like you that want to cross that line that you've drawn in the sand. That is amazing, Adam. And thank you so much for sharing glimpses of who Adam Adams is at your core and just giving us insider in addition and insider scoop. So Adam, I want you to close us out with telling the listeners and viewers once again, who you are, how they could connect with you on social media and leave them with one or two gems. Cause we already dropped a lot of gems in this episode, y'all. Awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me. It's been a, it's been a lot of fun hanging out with you. Um, who am I? I'm Adam A. Adams. It's my real name, triple A. Uh, on social, it's at literally Adam, and then I spell out triple, and then A, and then Adam. So if you wanted to find me on Facebook, see what I drop on Facebook, talking about mountain biking or jeeping or whatever, you can easily find me that way. Please send an actual private message, because I'm basically deleting everybody I'm like that I don't know. And so if, if you leave a private message and basically say, hey, I, I heard you on this podcast, um, I'll definitely add you and we can connect and, and I, I would be honored to connect with you. Um, I do have a company called Grow Your Show. Uh, link is growyourshow.com. Really what we do is we help podcasters get to the next level. So we help you with your messaging. We help you do all of the back end stuff so you don't have to edit a podcast. You don't have to be a tech person at all. You just push record. We'll handle the rest. We call it we're the easy button for podcasters. Um, if that's you, if you if you want to start your podcast, you can go to Grow Your Show and literally just schedule a call with me. And one or two gems. Um, let's do let's do one gem, and let's let's say that um, it's it's an interesting thing about podcasting. Everybody always asks, but how long should my episode be? And so I'll at least share with you the weirdest answer you've ever heard. It doesn't matter. It's the strangest thing. Because you're like getting held back and you're not starting your podcast because you don't know the exact length. You're like, people have told me that it should be 35 minutes. People have told me it should be the same length as of a drive. Uh, I only listen to podcasts that are 10 minutes or less. Or I listen to Joshua Rogany 
I'm, I know that's not his name, but I'm not going to say his name. Uh, I listened to Joshua Rogany on, uh, and, and his are two and a half hours, three hours long. And, uh, and I listen to that all the time. So do I need to do, I need to set aside three hours. Here's the thing. There's a couple factors to look at when you're starting your podcast. It's who is your listener? Going back to that, who is the perfect person that you want listening? And what are they looking for? Do they want a lot of healthy banter? Do they want it to be the length of a drive? Do they want it to be the same length as Joshua Rogany? Or do they want it to be like a quick five-minute snippet? And you're going to be able to understand that based on them. Secondly, you're going to be able to understand how are you going to add value? Because if you're not going to add uh, uh, any value at all on your podcast, it sh you shouldn't even have a podcast. If you can add massive amounts of value for three hours straight and keep people, in, then you're going to have to do three hours. If it's going to take you five minutes to pour into your listener and give them a really good nugget, then your podcast can be five minutes long. There are benefits to the shorter, and it's that you're going to have people being able to download lots of them at a time. And there's also benefits to the longer they're going to really feel like they get to know you. And so don't stress out about the length of it. I'll, I'll just mention what I do and we'll jump off. I have interviews that are about an hour long. We'll say 30 to 60 minutes. And when it's me solo, I try to stay five to 10 minutes and just pour in and jump off. And that seems to really help me uh, on my podcast because my, it helps my listener. It helps my listener understand what are other podcasters doing. Uh, by the way, I'll plug it. It's called The Podcast on Podcasting. But um, it helps the listener say, what are other podcasters doing? Because they get to go through somebody's journey. They get to understand the pros, the cons, and they get to know me a little bit better because I get to pour into them for just a short five, 10 minute. So I wouldn't stress about that anymore. Get, get your thought leadership, your meeting in person, your social media to the next level. I, I, I want to see that for you. And there you have it, listeners and viewers of Gems with Genesis Amaris Kemp. You just heard Adam A. Adams, triple A, y'all, here. And he dropped the three pillars of influence and he shared some insightful information. Make sure you are connecting with who you are and take that and represent it in your thought leadership, meeting in person and social media because there's only one you and we don't need robots, but we need you to be uniquely you. And until we chat next time, peace, love and lots of blessings. Signing out, Genesis Amaris Kemp and Adam A. Adams.